Why is it that when a narcissistic person meets a new person, their new supply, it seems like everything's better and it seems like they finally found the person they can get along with and everything's better than the way it was with you. Is that actually going on? No, it is not actually going on. What's going on is that person's being groomed to believe the narcissist is something that they're not. They're being groomed to believe that this toxic person that they have just met is an amazing person who is all the things that that narcissist wants their new supply to believe they are. So when you meet someone new, anybody who meets anybody new, you're getting impressions of that new person. They're getting impressions of you and they are le learning about who you are and you're learning about who they are, right? So when you're learning about someone new and they're only showing you what they want you to believe they are, and they're deliberately only showing you false versions of who they are, then they are grooming you. A narcissist will use grooming because it creates a narrative. It creates a whole belief about who that person is and what the relationship will be and how it will be and all of that so that the person becomes hooked. They, if, if they want to appear a certain way, then they know the right words to say to make themselves appear that way because the other person has no pretense of who that, who they are yet, right? So why wouldn't they believe it? And they can usually keep this mask on for quite a while and continue grooming and grooming love bombing and grooming together so that that person believes they're with somebody amazing. So when they're with new supply, that's what the new supply is getting. It's what you got in the beginning, maybe. Um, it's what every new person they meet in life. So I was actually told by someone, they spoke to a narcissist, somebody that has been diagnosed with sociopathy actually, um, and that person said when they meet new people, the sociopath said, when they meet new people, they show them who they want the person to believe they are. Because they said the first impression and the second impression are what creates the entire tone of the relationship. They said if a person can believe you're a certain thing, then they will always believe you're that thing. And they will always keep coming back to that for what's expected. Now, <laughs> you can see where that is completely manipulating someone into believing you're something you're not. That is the point of grooming. The point of grooming is to get you hooked and to keep you hooked and to make you confused. So when this grooming is happening, it's disarming the person. It is breaking down barriers. It's breaking down boundaries. It's breaking down the walls of the difference between you and me and we don't know each other, right? It's creating familiarity. It's creating trustworthiness and and false friendship and it creates an image that you believe in or that the new supply believes in so when they're meeting new supply they are not a new person they are deliberately manipulating the situation so the person will like them so the person will give them supplies so the person will be on their side be their girlfriend boyfriend whatever it is right they are deliberately doing this in a way that if they're not if they're not deliberately doing this, it's just the mechanism by which they meet people, right? They may not be fully self-aware that they're doing this, but it's the way that they go about new friendships and new relationships. It's sort of like, or charming someone in or um, luring someone. So how do they do it? How do they groom this new person? They mirror, <laughs> they mirror that person's, you know, they have a narcissistic person has the cognitive empathy intact, meaning they can sense what other people are experiencing. They can sense it. That doesn't mean they feel it and they want to respond to it, which is the empathy we're talking about when we say they lack empathy, but they have the cognitive awareness of the other person's likes, dislikes. They're reading the room they're, They have radar out there where they're trying to pick up information really fast so that they can mirror it back. Oh, you like that? I like that, that kind of thing. Or you like that? I don't like that. How about this? Which is also intriguing to you, right? Because they've paid attention. Whether or not they're doing it on purpose, this is how it happens. They will fish for information. So they will ask you lots of questions. They will seem really interested in you. They might seem like over the top interested in you or really getting into asking questions about specific topics that you're talking about or just flat out 
fishing for information so that they can later use it to pretend that they are that thing and give you everything you want in the beginning, grooming you. They will often speak to your vulnerabilities. So if you have revealed your vulnerabilities, and this is why I always tell people when they say, like say they're meeting someone to date or they're dating. And they say, when should I tell someone that I've been in a toxic relationship? I say, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, at least not for quite a while. What you can say if someone says what happened to your last relationship is it didn't work out. The reason is if someone is toxic, they're gonna use that vulnerability to pretend that they are the perfect person or pretend that they are your savior, your hero, whatever it is, in order, they're gonna use it. They're gonna use that information. So while it's nice to share and let someone know where you're coming from, if you're very serious about them, it, wait till you're serious or wait till you know them pretty well before you start revealing things like that. They will present a false self. They will present the self that whoever the viewer is, whoever this new supply is, or you want to see. Future fake, all the time. Future faking, what will be, how, oh, that'll be great together. This, we'll do this, we'll do that. And through the future faking, you are then in the present time projecting forward what will be based on what you're seeing in them oh, I'll be with this wonderful person who treats me this wonderful way in the future. And so then when you get to the future and because this future will never happen, they can string you along for a long time. They play victim to play on empathy. So this is another reason not to reveal your own past with toxic people because they might say, oh, I went through that too and start playing the victim when in fact that they were the perpetrator. You just don't know. It takes time to get to know people. And then they begin the soulmate fake out. They was to destiny. We were meant to be together. The whole thing is setting you up to see them through the lens that they create, not to see them as they are. They don't want to be seen as they are. And that's half the time why the devaluing starts because things get real, right? You get real and you start having an actual real relationship with someone because you have put enough time in with someone to get to know them. And the mask starts slipping because they can't handle it when things get real because it was never real for them to begin with. They were always putting on pretense so that you would see them a certain way. They don't want to be seen. So here's the thing, why it looks different with new supply and why it looks better is because they refine it every time they do it and they refine it using their past relationships. So a, a narcissistic person will take the good things that they like about you and start pretending it's them sometimes and then giving that to the other person and what it looks like to you is that other person that new supply is getting what should have been yours right because it's a direct reflection of what you wanted from them so say say you have certain qualities and then they start giving those qualities to that new person or you have certain requests i would like anything it could let's just say i would like more affection you're not affectionate enough okay and they don't ever do it for you. But the second they meet someone new, they're all over them. Affection, affection, affection. And the person's main comment, they're the most affectionate person I've ever met because they're learning, they're not learning from their mistakes as in like, oh shoot, I wasn't affectionate enough. I need to be more so in my future relationships. No, it's, oh, that's what that, that's what people want. Okay, I'll give it here hundred percent. But see, they're not doing it for the long term. They're doing it just to get the person, to get the supply, to have people be attached to them. They're not going to stay this way with the new supply guys. They can't because they can't have healthy relationships because they don't relate to people. They only, they only project and gaslight and control relationships through manipulation. So if it's happening to you and you being groomed or whether you see it happening with the new supply, understand that this grooming is not healthy relating. Healthy relating is actually showing who you really are to somebody who is showing who they really are. Being authentic, being natural, maybe keeping some of the more private things to oneself for a while until there's trust built and relationship forms and then that can be shared. You know what I'm saying? That is healthier. The, the way a narcissist does this, it, if you feel yourself giving too much information to someone because they're drawing it from you, if you feel like it's too good to be true, it probably is, you know? If you're seeing it happen to the new supply, 
please remember no contact. Remember that no contact is your friend. You're not doing it to punish anyone, to be childish, to any of that, right? Some people say, no contact, I'm an adult, I don't need to do that. Well, here's the thing, you're sitting there watching somebody else get manipulated and you're believing it's something good for that other person when it isn't. And it's hard, it hurts you, it keeps you trauma bonded and it keeps you invested in what that narcissistic person is doing. So remember that no contact when you seeing this happen with new supply as best you can, is really your best option for yourself. And if people are telling you this, you can say to people, hey, I don't wanna hear about their what they're doing and who they're doing it with. It's never though a good thing when the narcissist has new supply for that new supply. It's never what it looks like. Mm -hmm. My name is Lise Colucci and I am one of the life coaches at Queen Being. If you need any help or any information or anything like that, check out the main description of every video. Please hit subscribe and hit the thumbs up and I will see you guys next time.